If you haven't known arrhythmia in your heart, an AFib or some kind of electrical problem or weakness happening in your heart, you just don't have that energy to get up, go do what you want to do, that kind of that, that youthful spunk inside of your body. Or if you have family members that have had a weakened heart like I have, I my, my father had his heart electrically shut down when he was 51. My grandfather had heart failure in his 70s and then eventually died of heart disease. If you're anything like me or the average American, as you age, you lose the zest kind of coming from the source here or you have family members with it. I'm going to show you almost an untalked about, potentially unheard of nutrient that can really jumpstart your heart. And once you understand a little bit of the biology behind what I'm going to explain right now, you'll see really clearly why your heart just can't catch up if it gets behind. And then that leads to electrical issues, even valvular issues or chamber issues where your heart generally becomes weakened. But let's understand exactly how this works first, okay? So kind of taking you through a little bit of the anatomy of the body, what causes a weakened heart? So let's say you had a really hard day of work or a workout or a lot of physical labor or just a long day. Like my dad used to drive truck for UPS. And so there was a lot of strain on his heart, a lot of stress. He'd be looking around, make sure he get an accident up and back 12 hour days. Our muscles, right? You can feel this, just get tired. They get weak. If you were just raked all day or used to mow yards as a kid, your, your muscles would just be tired. That's because all of the, at the cellular level anyway, all of the energy that they had available, all available molecules that made ATP, which is our energy units in the body. This is our gasoline for our muscles. They just get all used up from moving around and doing the work. So we rest. After exercise, after hard work, we rest in order to give our muscles time to burn up more glucose, more food, so that they can make more ATP, our energy unit. That same situation, that same process occurs in the heart. But there's one vital difference. The heart muscle can't stop to rest. It doesn't get re-energizing time. So it can produce more ATP, its energy units. So when ATP levels fall, the heart muscle simply operates with increasing weakness, pumping less blood with every single beat, leaving it susceptible to electrical failure, to valvular issues. It wears it out over time. So if we can figure out a way to boost the ATP levels inside of your heart, you can re-energize the heart muscles that may be preventing or even potentially reverse some of the symptoms, if you already have them, of heart failure or electrical heart issues or arrhythmias or valve issues. So the key to reestablishing ATP is to understand the makeup of ATP itself. Biochemistry alert, ATP, the molecule of it, consists of three simple parts. Adenosine triphosphate. Part number one, the A, adenosine. It's a nitrogen-based molecule. TP, triphosphate. Pretty simple. Three phosphates, ATP. Now here's the key to it, you ready? The third piece. To hold together the adenosine and the three phosphates, you need D-ribose right in the middle. Three phosphates attached to it, adenosine attaches to it. That, my friend, your biochemistry lesson, is an ATP molecule. That is the fuel, the rocket fuel, the energy units inside of your body. You only have a select few and you have to produce them every single day. If we can create more of those and feed them to your heart, we can replenish the gas tank, increase the weakness that is of many people's hearts, especially over the age of 40, when you start to lose that luster, you start to lose that usefulness and re-energize you and potentially overcome arrhythmias and valvular issues, weakened heart. Traditionally, what happens in heart failure is a cellular energy deficiency that arises in which the D-ribose production falls, especially in the heart muscles. And then that's exactly what leads to the decrease in ATP, because D-ribose is the main thing that builds it. So production in the very cells that need the energy the most goes down. So without ample amounts of D-ribose, the cells can't capture the metabolic energy 
and they almost literally starve themselves into weakness. So the obvious solution then is provide extra D-ribose in the form potentially of an oral supplement to get high enough doses. It bypasses the overwhelmed cellular D-ribose producing machinery and it just pumps D-ribose in to create new ATP molecules. And it works. Studies show that D-ribose replenishes low cardiac muscle energy levels and improves cardiac function during ischemia, which is the lack of oxygen inside of the heart. In fact, one study showed that if they mega dosed with D-ribose at doses of 15 grams each day, it reduced or prevented the occurrence of atrial fibrillation in persons that were experiencing that condition. It also showed to repair the chambers of the heart. Studies also show that taking D-ribose helps the recovery time, especially of the muscles, which your heart is a muscle. So this is used by performance athletes to help recover, but your most important muscle that you have is your heart. Another fascinating study showed that with mega doses of multiple grams of D-ribose on a daily basis, improve the heart's ability to tolerate lower blood flow. So if you are having a weakened heart, blood flow has slowed down, you're able to tolerate it, especially during movement and exercise. And they studied this in people that had coronary artery disease. So it strengthened the heart even when you had the weakening already happening. You see heart failure itself increases how hard the heart and the lungs have to work in order to get rid of the carbon dioxide that you're breathing into your body and then replenish non-oxygenated blood with oxygenated blood. That's what the heart and the lungs are working on all day long. So another study took 16 people with severe heart failure and they were given a trial dose, large dose of D-ribose for just eight weeks. Every one of the patients had significant improvement in their breathing parameters, which are so often impaired in heart failure patients. That's what happened with my grandfather near the end. He just could never get his breath. But the D-ribose supplementation significantly increased how much air needed to be uh, moved in order to eliminate metabolically produced carbon dioxide from the body. It increased that production, that carbon dioxide movement by 16% from one nutrient. So how can you get D-ribose into your body? Well, you can eat it. There's rich foods in D-ribose, chicken, ground beef, salmon, uh, almonds, eggs, cheese, cheddar cheese, especially spinach, asparagus, broccoli, all good sources of D ribose. So clean eating that I teach all the time and talk about all the time, good guidelines of clean foods is going to give you good amounts of D ribose, but you can also supplement with it, right? If you overdo D ribose and you do try to go mega doses, like some of these studies, it can create some nausea. It can create a headache, can create a little bit of discomfort. So I don't recommend going, you know, crazy on it with multiple grams. But if you start inserting this into your regimen on a daily basis, over time, it's going to add up because you're slowly feeding the heart the nutrient that it needs. So I recommend 750 milligrams per day, if you're, especially if you are dealing with an arrhythmia, uh, a weakness of it, if you have family history of this, to be charging up. So I take 750 milligrams a day of D-ribose. I put it right in with my electrolyte powder. So I'm getting my electrolytes to support the heart, magnesium, the salts that the heart needs to run, as well as D-ribose, which is gonna energize the heart and my favorite amino acid for the heart as well. If you wanna learn more about my favorite amino acid, it's called taurine. It's an amino acid, it's extremely important. I made a video just on that. Now below, you'll find the electrolyte powder that I use to get these nutrients in, but check out why a person needs taurine, especially if dealing with heart problems.